Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kelly and I am a physical therapist and I specialize in oncology, lymphedema, and women's health. On this channel, I share tips and techniques to help minimize your side effects and your symptoms so you can get back to focusing on what's most important to you in life. If that fits you, be sure to follow along by subscribing below for weekly videos. So in today's video, I'm gonna show and share how I teach my patients to do self-bandaging to their upper extremity or their arm for lymphedema. Compression is the key component of complete decongestive therapy to help reduce volume of lymphedema in the arm. Compression bandaging may also help general arm and hand swelling. A really common issue that I see with patients coming into me is that they try to go into a compression sleeve or compression garment right away. For those who have lymphedema, moving into a compression garment or compression sleeve is not going to be as effective as these are meant to be maintenance garments. Going directly into a compression sleeve after surgery may work for those who have mild swelling, but for those who have true lymphedema, you will need to go through one to four weeks of complete decongestive therapy to help shrink and reduce the volume of your arm and your hand, and then you can move back into a compression sleeve or glove that is measured and fitted for you at your smaller size. So today I'm gonna to show you a basic standard full routine for compression bandaging. Now, everyone is different, all lymphedema is different, so most individuals will vary from this a little bit. But I decided I'm gonna show an in-between routine for those who have mild to moderate lymphedema, knowing that some who have more severe are gonna have to go with thicker compression and some can get away with less. So the first thing I'm gonna be using is stockinette. This is gonna be used as a liner and it goes against the skin. What we're gonna use for the hands is elastomol. Elastomol is gonna come in a two inch width roll and what you can do is take the two inch roll and fold it in half and roll it back up to create a one inch double layered roll. That's gonna give a little bit better compression to the fingers and be a little bit more comfortable and easier to use. Now for the next layer, you have a couple different options. Number one, the lightest layer is something like Artiflex. This is a very thin cotton padding that's gonna be really thin against your skin. This is best for someone who has really mild lymphedema or if you just want a softer comfort layer closest to your skin. If you have a little bit more moderate lymphedema or you have sensitive skin, you may wanna try something a little bit thicker like Rosadol Soft. Rosadol Soft is gonna come in various different widths. This is a 10 centimeter width and it's gonna be a little bit of a thicker white foam compared to the padding and it's gonna be flexible so you can form it to your arm but it's going to give a little bit more support for your bandages. For those who have more moderate to severe lymphedema, you may wanna go with a thicker gray foam. It does have different widths. This is actually a pretty thin width, but that's gonna give the most compression around your arm to help shrink the fluid quicker, but also be the most comfortable. I have created another video on various foams and pads that you can try using and explaining what I use each for, and I will put the link for that down below or up above. For the back of the hand, you can try something more like gray foam that is shaped for more comfort, or you can try a swell spot, which is a pre-made pack of foam that you can just place under your bandaging for more comfort. This is something you can purchase. I will put a link down below, or you can try creating your own. I have created a YouTube video on how to create your own swell spot, and I will put a link for that up here or down below. For bandages, you wanna make sure you're using a short stretch bandage, something like Comprolan. You don't wanna use something like an ACE bandage as that's going to cause you more of a tourniquet and not do as well of a job of reducing your fluid. For bandaging my arm, I'm gonna be using a six centimeter bandage and two eight centimeter bandages, knowing that for each individual, you will need different sizes. So work with your certified lymphedema therapist to find what works best for you. Pro tip, make sure before you get started, you wanna get your tape ready. You can use scotch tape or this is my favorite tape, it's 3M's transport tape. This does a really nice job of sticking to bandages so they don't fall down as quickly. All of these products can be ordered online. I have placed links to each of these products below where you can find them for a reasonable price but high quality. So first thing you wanna do is make sure that you get lotion on your arm. Make sure you use something without perfumes or unscented so you don't irritate your skin. Next thing you're gonna do is take your stockinette. And what I did already is to cut a little bit of hole a couple inches up from the end for your thumb. Then you're gonna go ahead 
and place your arm all the way in and make sure that your thumb comes out the hole and bring it all the way up to your shoulder up over the top. It's okay that you have a little excess at the top as you can fold it down at the end. If you feel like you've got a lot of extra, you can take it off and trim it down. You just wanna make sure that you get it all the way to the top. So after you get your stockinette on, the next thing we're gonna do is wrap the fingers. We're gonna use that one inch double folded roll to complete the fingers. Now, it doesn't really matter what finger you start with. You tend to find what just fits best for you and what's easiest for you. But when you put it on, what I try to teach my patients is to think about putting on like a snail. So this is the back of a snail and the bottom. If you do it upside down like this, it's gonna make it a lot more challenging. So place the bottom of the snail on your skin like this and it's easier to roll. I tend to start with the thumb or first finger and then I tend to do every other. You can just do them all in order. I do every other because I think it stays better but it really doesn't matter too much. So the first thing you're gonna do is anchor it at your wrist. I know this is challenging on your own so if you need to tape it down against the stockinette a little bit, that may help or finding someone else that may help. So what I'm gonna do is come around the wrist. I'm just holding it with my finger until I get around and then once I can get it to anchor down by holding it in, I'll move on. So on the back of the hand, I'm gonna come all the way over to the thumb, and what you wanna do, or what I tend to do, is come all the way to the top knuckle for each finger, and then work my way back down the finger. That helps avoid from anything snagging on the extra fabric, and it keeps it all in place. So coming to the end of the thumb, and I'm gonna come around, and then what you're gonna do is overlap about 50% or half of it all the way down until you get to the end. When you get to the bottom or all the way back to the finger, you're gonna come around the back of the hand, under the wrist, and then come around up to the next finger. So next finger I'm gonna do the pointer and I'm gonna come all the way to the end and then make my way back down. Now, I'll be honest, if you never drop your roll, you're doing way better than I do. I tend to drop this at least once a day when I'm working with my patients, and that's with two hands. So, all the way down to get to the bottom at the knuckle, and then come around the back, and then to the next. So anything left, you can just tuck into the back. For a lot of people, you may have to have a second roll. Some people can only use one roll for three fingers, then need another roll for the other two. I do have a smaller hand, so it may be likely that you will need another one, and that's okay. If you have extra at the end, just trim off the end. You can either tape it down, or what I just do is tuck it a little bit into the other piece and finish with that. What you wanna do, so when you're completed, what you should be able to do is create a fist with your hand. And if you see your knuckles stick out or a lot of skin, you may have missed a couple spots and you may wanna try and see if you can get a little bit lower for more coverage. So what I'm gonna do is keep it pretty simple and just use the Artiflex, but I am gonna put a piece of foam or gray foam on the back of the hand. I tend to find that the back of the hand needs some sort of support, otherwise it gets to be a little bit too tight at the hand and that can be uncomfortable for your fingers. It also helps avoid from your fingers getting pinched off or feeling like you're losing blood flow to your fingers. The other thing I do is take my gray foam and make it a little bit longer. So some people will cut it off right at the end where the wrist starts. But I tend to find that those who have a little bit of a thinner wrist, that if you don't have a little bit more padding here, the bandages tend to cause more of a tourniquet, which can also be pretty uncomfortable or get you to feel like you're having some sort of carpal tunnel syndrome when your hand goes numb. So if you take your foam, make it two from your knuckles and a little bit past your wrist, like an inch or so, that does help support it. If you are gonna use your Rosadelle Soft, you can put a hole in there to put your thumb through and just use the rose at all soft all the way up without adding extra foam and that tends to be okay for those who have that mild to moderate lymphedema. 
So for me, I'm just gonna use the Artiflex or the cotton padding. I did already put a little bit of a hole here for my thumb. And remember, we're thinking about more of that snail. So the roll on the back and the flat part on the bottom, that goes directly against the skin. That's gonna make it a lot easier for you afterwards. So put my thumb through to help. And then after that, I'm gonna take the gray foam, put it on the back of my hand that goes a little past my wrist and then be able to roll the foam over, or the cotton, excuse me, over the foam to hold it in place. And then what I'm gonna do is come through that thumb and finger area, but I'm gonna fold over my cotton, or you can put another hole and put your thumb through. And then come around a second time to secure it. And I'm gonna come, that one's gonna come underneath the thumb, okay? From there, could just bring this foam a little bit lower had it a little bit high, but I want it around the knuckles when I put the bandages on. So I'm going to just spiral it up the arm, overlapping about 50%. So same thing with the rose at all, the thicker foam, if you have that, just overlap about 50% the whole way up. And if you're using your gray foam, you work with your therapist, you can try to find something like this Artiflex to roll over the top of the foam to keep it in place, kind of like I did for the hand. So because I have a little bit of a smaller arm, this is a little bit long for me. So I'm gonna actually just take a little bit extra and I'll show why and rip it off. And from there, you can either do this separate or with it. So I'm getting to the elbow crease and what I wanna do is put a little bit more padding there because again, it gets to be another area that gets a little bit uncomfortable if it causes that tourniquet where it rubs in. With our normal clothes, when we have clothes that go to our elbow crease or behind the knee that tends to get bulked up and start to come together and that will tourniquet. So adding a little bit more compression there, or a little bit more layering there can help avoid that. So now I have a second 10 centimeter one. They do make longer ones. You could just do one big long one, but what I'm gonna do is start for where I left off. I'm just gonna hold that in place and going to go around overlapping about halfway. Gotta smooth that out. 50% overlap, you can do a little bit more. It's not gonna hurt to do more. Gotta get this back pulled up, fell down. That's why it's easier to make a longer one because you can always trim it or fold it down, but it likes to roll off the shoulder and then bring it all the way up and all the way up and around. As high as you can get it up on the shoulder, equal with the armpit because if you go all the way up and you move it's going to roll down and then you also get a tourniquet here so i don't tend to go higher than the armpit but you do want to try to get it as high as you can you can okay so i got it pretty high i'm just going to rip it off with my hand if you had your rosedale you'd have to try to cut it although that does rip a little bit too fix that a little bit and then there's my cotton layering same thing you could have done with this, or if you have your gray foam all the way up, you'd have something like this over the top of the gray foam to hold it in place. So after you've got your cotton or your rosedal or your padding underneath, you're gonna go for your short stretch bandages. Again, once again, thinking about the snail, okay? Again, make sure you have your tape ready, whatever that is. For the same thing, I'm going to anchor this at the wrist. So I'm gonna to try to use my finger to hold it down. If you have trouble, put a piece of tape there to start it and come around and to layer it at your wrist. With these bandages, they have a lot of stretch to them. You don't wanna pull so hard that you're causing these wrinkles in this, but you do want it snug. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different on what they tolerate, but you wanna give it a little bit, like a 50, 75% pull without going 100 to the point that it gets the creases. So coming around, I'm gonna go after I anchor at the wrist, gonna go back up to the equal with the knuckles to cover up the end of the foam and then through. If at the thumb you get a little bit of extra fold here, you can come through and fold that over a little bit more so you don't get that cut in near your thumb. From there, I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna do that a second time adding a little bit of support. I got this to unravel, so let me fix this quick. Smooth it out. And then come through again. Actually, sometimes it's easier if you pinch it and fold under, so you don't roll up like what I just did. And then come through again with a little compression. Now, after you've anchored it twice right at the knuckles, then come under the thumb 
And what I should, should have said before, make sure you keep your fingers apart because that will help you avoid any tourniquets on the side of your hand. So come around your hand and same thing, a little pull and then down. So I'm gonna roll it or I'm going to unwind it all the way down, overlapping about 50%. This is where you have another option. If you're brand new to this, just make it easy and just spiral it down your arm. Don't do anything too fancy, just spiral it. If you've had some practice and you want a little bit better compression or it stays in place, you can do what we call a little bit more of a figure eight. So you'll come down and then up, and then you, when you come around again, you'll go down, and then next time you'll come up and around. So I made it all the way to the elbow and what I want to do is I don't want a lot of layering in the elbow crease because it just causes irritation and tourniquets after time. So I stop this bandage right as I hit the elbow crease and any little extra I might have I'll fill into the elbow but then I'll take a little less pressure off and come down a little bit again to the forearm and end there. And then take your piece of tape and hold down the bandage. Okay, so there's number one. So I'm gonna start with my eight centimeter right about at the forearm, right below where I ended. Now, if you are doing this by yourself, which with many of you will be doing, you wanna think about what would be the easiest to reach. So if you have a hard time bending your elbow at this point or reaching, what I would recommend is making sure the bandages will roll outward towards your, excuse me, away from your arm, that's gonna make it easier if you have to actually drop the bandages and catch it versus coming around the outside, you almost have to throw it over your arm, which gets to be a little, be a little trickier. So you wanna think about it's rolling outwards away from you. So I taped mine down just to help at the fore. I'm gonna come around and again, I'm gonna go to this elbow crease area right where it bends and go right below. So the top of the line where the bandage is, right where the crease is, and then come through the elbow. And then what I'm gonna do is kinda cross over the back of the elbow for support and come all the way around to the top of the crease so there's very minimal carryover or folding there and come around. And then when I'm gonna come back around, I'm gonna do this last one right in the middle. That's gonna help avoid as many layers around that area so you don't get as much of a tourniquet. After that, then I'm gonna to start to work up my arm. Again, that's why I like roll away from me because it's easier just to let it drop and hug it as you come around. So for those who are beginners, just spiral it up. For those who wanna do more of that figure eight pattern, go ahead and do that. But overlap about 50% all the way up and over. Give a nice pull, 75% pull on the bandage or more depending on what your comfort level is, up and around. For those who have more swelling, it's probably more comfortable to have more pull or compression. If you have a thinner arm or a leaner arm, it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable to have that tight pull, so you're gonna have to find what works best for you. I'm gonna work all the way up, my hair all the way here, get the bandages up, as high as it goes. Stacking it in the way, all the way up to equal with your armpit if you can. Again, if you go really high, it's okay. But however, it, if it rolls down really easily, depending on the shape of your arm, you don't wanna do too much of that so you don't tourniquet at the top. And then once you get to the end, compression there, you're gonna take your tape and tape it down. So, there's the bandaging. If you have true lymphedema and more moderate lymphedema, you're gonna likely take a third eight centimeter bandage and start at the wrist and make your way all the way up so that you have that gradient all the way up. If you have a leaner arm and you feel like this is enough compression or you feel like you're getting iffy with your hands getting numb, you may wanna just stop there and try this first. So there's your compression bandaging for your upper extremity, knowing that this is a pretty basic option and you're gonna work with your certified lymphedema therapist to find what works best for you. You may have a troubled area like your elbow or the back of your hand or your fingers and you're gonna alter your compression and your paddings and your foams to find what you need to help reduce that area. 
When your bandaging is on, it's a great time to do your exercise routine. I have created a video on lymphedema exercises for the upper extremity or the arm, and I will put a link for that down below or up here. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by pressing the like button down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.